Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's video continues the theme of candidiasis of the digestion organs, including such diseases as oropharyngeal candidiasis or trash, candida esophagitis, and candidiasis of the stomach. These diseases compose the group of mucocutaneous infections that cause abundant development of barring vegetating forms of the fungi with formation of pseudomycelium. Necrosis of the epithelial cells occurs. Threads of the pseudomycelium are located close to each other, forming continuous growth, penetrating deeply into the place of absent epithelial cells. The fungi threads often sprout through the basal membrane of the cells. It is necessary to say that candida species basically invades the mucous membranes presented by the multi-layered flat epithelium, and consequently physicians more often observe candidiasis of the oral cavity, esophagus, vagina, and skin. Candida armicans is highly polymorphic, switching in vivo to alternative vegetative growth form in response to changing environmental conditions. This phenotypic plasticity is an important virulence factor that aids in its invasion into epithelium, dissemination through south of the host, and survival in different host niches, and it also helps to modulate the host immune response and co-interact immune surveillance. Our research has been conducted for 50 years, namely from 2003 to 2018. In total, 52 patients were involved into the research. The group of patients with oropharyngeal candidiasis included the patients with stomatitis, glossitis, and pharyngitis. According to their case histories, some patients had taking antibiotics for a long period of time, others suffered from the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or diabetes mellitus. This group of patients with oropharyngeal candidiasis included 24 patients. The clinical manifestation of the disease did not differ from those ones typical for pathological process of other etiologies in this area, and the patients complained of pains in the throat at swallowing, pain in the moments, difficulty in swallowing and any food, and even pain when they drank water, as well as food farism or loss of test. The examination revealed loose white coat on the tongue, soft palate, and back wall on the throat. When the coat is removed, erosion of the area was observed. The presented photo demonstrates the cause of candidiasis of the oral cavity in various patients. In all the cases, the diagnosis was confirmed by identification of the East Hi-Fi and Pseudo Hi-Fi in a gram-stained direct smear or culture of scraping from the mucous membrane of the oral cavity, tongue and the back wall of the throat. The recommended treatment for the oral cavity candidiasis is candida solution for to five times daily for 14 days. Another method is taking oral nystatin suspensions that should be kept in the month as long as possible, then swallowed or spit it out three or four times daily for two weeks after disappearance of the symptoms and signs. It is also possible to use systemic antifungal medicine such as fluconazole for two or three weeks. For treat these patients, we use nystatin in the individually tested doses. The daily doses of nystatin range from 9 million units to 13,500 units of medicine. The therapy has lasted for 6 to 8 days. We asked our patient to chew nystatin tablets up to their full dissolution. The therapy was conducted by titration method. We registered complete clinical and microbiological recovery in 84% of our patients. Such signs of the disease as loose white coat on the tongue, soft palate, back wall of the throat have disappeared. Patients have noted complete restoration of the test, disappearance of pain in the mouth at swallowing. Later on, only in 7 
patients with acquired immunodeficiency syndrome candidiasis aggravated that again required our intervention. As a whole, we did not observe any adverse effect associated with the use doses. On the slide, you can see how the cost of nistatin looks like with a single tested dose of 9 tablets. The second group consisted of patients with candida esophagitis. This condition was manifested by increased sedation, pain in the substantial area, a decrease in appetite and weight loss. In the group of patients under study, candidiasis development was facilitated by some pathology of internal organs such as iron deficiency anemia, hypo and antacid gastritis, peptic alpha, elderly age, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. This group under study included 13 patients. Some of them had suffered from acquired immunodeficiency syndrome infections. The Fargo gastro fibroscopy revealed that in 73% of patients, the entire esophageal mucous membrane had been hyperemic with numerous white loose cord. In 30% of patients, there was not white cord. However, there were separate white spots. Cytological examinations revealed candida pseudomycelium and culturing esophageal spicement on subroad medium demonstrated growth of candida fungi. The protocols of treatment of patients with esophageal candidiasis recommends applying antifungal drugs of several groups. The anzol group of drugs is most effective. Oral use is recommended for those of them that are not absorbed. It is clotrimazole and mecanazole. However, the drugs rendering systemic effect from this group, ketoconazole, fluconazole and intraconazole, are more effective. It is generally considered that mistatin is less effective when the esophagus is affected, and it is recommended as a second-line therapy. We use mistatin in the individually tested dose to treat our patients. The daily dose of mistatin ranged from 7,500,000 units to 13,500,000 units of medicine. The course of therapy has lasted for 7 to 9 days. We asked our patients to chew mistatin tablets before they complete the solution and then swallow the chewed tablets. The therapy was conducted by titration method. The positive effect of the therapy was observed in 84% of all patients. After the treatment, patients did not complain of substantial pain and increased salivation. The control gastrofibroscopy showed disappearance of the white coats and recovery of the esophageal mucosa in the 92% of cases. Repeated occurrence of the symptom of the esophageal candidiasis and complaints of the patients were only observed in the group of patients with acquired immunodeficiency syndrome infection. In stomach candidiasis, the patient complained mainly on early and late pains localized in pyloroduodenal and epigastric areas accompanied by nausea, eruptions, and headburn. Stomach candidiasis, as a rule, is secondary to ulcer and gastroesophageal reflux diseases. Achlorchadria, in turn, contributes to colonization of the fungi on the mucous membrane with a subsequent invasion, especially in defected areas, ulcers or erosion. According to our observation, the patients of this group repeatedly received courses of therapy for chronic gastritis without any obvious effects. During the electroapocanthia diagnosis of our patients, the nozzle of candida species was tested and the subsequent mistatin testing both confirmed the diagnosis of stomach candidiasis and enabled to select doses of mistatin individually for each patient. In total, uh, there were 15 patients in the medical history of patients, including chronic gastritis, with repeatedly conducted courses of therapy. Gastrofibroscopy of 70% of patients revealed erosive gastritis. In 46% of patients, fibrosis layering on the surface of folds were registered. Cytological examination demonstrated the presence of candida pseudomycelium in 84% of the patients. The recommended therapy for stomach gastritis includes nistatin and modern antifungal drugs 
based on fluconazole, ketoconazole. We used for the treatment of our patients an individually tested dose of nistatin. The daily dose of nistatin in this group of patients reaches 3 million 700,000 units to 10 million 500,000 units of medicine. The duration of therapy lasted for 6 to 12 days. Additional therapy included omeprazole for pain in the stomach and headburn and cervical amnesia and vomiting. Severe DRA was treated with the Imodium. The contral gastrofibrofibroscopy after the therapy has shown complete elimination of gametophagia from the stomach mucus in 86% of our cases. Apparently, you notice that you are offered a prescription scheduled for the dose of 9 tablets on the first day of administration. You have the right to ask me why this dose is not more or less. During the story, I repeatedly pointed out that the doses of nistatin tested during medicament testing technique exceeded the recommended doses of the drug for the treatment of various forms of candidiasis of the gastrointestinal tract. The prescribing scheme arose as a result of long-term follow-up of patients. It is at this dose that patients never experience side effects from the therapy. In some cases, we tried to prescribe 10 tablets for therapy, but some patients had unpleasant sensation in the form of nausea, which made us refuse to increase doses of the drug. As I said before, observations of recent years show that the tested doses are of nistatin agrovin, which forced us to split the ongoing therapy into several stages. But in the case of oral administration, we didn't increase the dose of nistatin and it doesn't exceed 9 tablets per administration. It is obvious that the nistatin prescription scheme suggests that if the tested dose of nistatin is less than 9 tablets, then the prescribed dose of the drug decreases depending on the dose of nistatin received during medicament testing. The final decision on the prescribed dose of the drug depends on what dose of nistatin was tested in the process of medicament testing technique. Dear colleagues, I introduce today our approach to therapy of patients with mucocutaneous forms of candidiasis of gastrointestinal organs. Thank you for your attention. If you liked this video, please like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. For me, it will be a sign that such videos with such a topic are interesting to you. All the best and see you the next time. Bye.